I'm Rahul Talari, Senior Machine Learning Engineer at CoreWeave, and today we'll be talking about serverless, uh, why bare metal is better. So let's get into it. Um, so the agenda for today is to understand what serverless on K8 is and uh, uh, describe the key advantages. Uh, and then we'll move on to why CoreWeave does it better and show you some benchmarks against generalized cloud providers to understand how we do it better. Uh, and we'll talk about a client case study and a testimonial to kind of prove um, how we're doing this uh, at scale. And we'll conclude with the question. All right. So what is serverless on Kubernetes? So serverless on Kubernetes uh, basically means that you're able to deploy applications, services, functions, um, and wrap them up in a container and deploy them on a Kubernetes cluster. So in traditional um, software and infrastructure, what happens is you allocate servers or you buy servers, test them, ensure they're reliable. And once they are, you basically deploy your applications onto these servers and account for scale. So if there's a lot of traffic coming in all of a sudden, then what you need to do is actually buy more servers, uh, account for the extra traffic, and then monitor and ensure that the hardware is reliable. Uh, in the modern world, this does not fare well, especially with the scaling tendencies of uh, applications these days. Um, and so what we do is we actually allow for these applications or services to get deployed on Kubernetes, and we automatically allocate resources. So we allocate GPUs, CPUs, memory, and we auto scale for traffic. So if there's a million new requests coming in uh, on a certain day because of a burst in traffic, uh, since your chat app got really popular, um, what happens is you can instantly scale these replicas to allow for handling these millions of requests. Um, and we also handle routing uh, to the appropriate users and clients from Knative. So this is what the modern cloud looks like. The modern cloud basically allows for automatic uh, server management and resource allocation. Um, we run everything on bare metal, so it provides high performance and low latency, uh, especially for end user applications uh, running machine learning workloads. Um, we have a broad range of GPUs, uh, so we have all kinds of SKUs to right size your workload, um, especially when you don't want to spend money on idle compute, uh, where you have to spin up additional servers just to account for traffic, and they're sitting idle for about 12 hours a day uh, and you're actually paying for those servers despite not using them. Um, we try to be sustainable, um, so we try to be green and conserve power uh, and build our data centers to ensure that we're uh, complying with uh, the carbon emissions and other such things. Uh, we also provide world-class support, um, so we uh, uh, talk to our customers with passion. Uh, we ensure that they're successful in whatever they do. Okay. So the stack, um, what this means on a high level, right? So the traditional tech stack has hardware, so it has bare metal and an operating system sitting on top of it. Um, and here's what's important is on a generalized cloud, you have a hypervisor that is responsible for deploying or spinning up virtual machines that have your uh, binaries, apps, uh, and libraries, uh, and then Kubernetes pods spin up on top of these virtual machines. Um, whereas in, in CoreWeave's tech stack, we eliminate the need for a hypervisor and a virtual machine. So we have bare metal, uh, we have a lightweight operating system, uh, and we run Kubernetes directly on top of this. So we're, we're actually mitigating the use of a hypervisor, which causes a lot of additional latency, especially when you want to spin up uh, containers really fast to serve your users. Uh, we run services on top of these uh, uh, on top of our cluster and provide uh, optimized runtime so you can spin up containers and load your model efficiently. A little more into what our tech stack looks like. Um, we allow for a massive scale, so we can scale up to thousands of pods, uh, thousands of GPUs to run the most intense machine learning workloads. Uh, we have several high performance queues, uh, such as the A100. Uh, we have a lot of H100s coming in and the new L40S that supports FP8. We're multi-region, so we're all across the US and we're trying to expand to Europe. Uh, and our storage is scalable to petabytes or um, further. Uh, we also offer the fastest auto scaling in the, indus in the industry, and I'll explain why. Um, so we have Core Weave Flanks here uh, that handles uh, the node itself. So it takes care of the node lifecycle, uh, checks whether the node is healthy, runs certain health checks to ensure that the workloads running are deterministic, and also monitors these nodes in case they uh, get faulty. Um, and they get cordon, so you're actually not managing any of these nodes by yourself. We're automatically managing and ensure that you're only deploying your workloads on healthy nodes. 
Uh, we have a core wave control plane that is, is responsible for uh, our custom resource definitions uh, and controllers to actually deploy your workloads uh, in your namespace. Uh, we offer machine learning tools such as Core Weave Sunk, uh, which is actually being used uh, by a lot of customers, and uh, they're running large-scale fine-tuning and training workloads. Um, so Core Weave Sunk actually uh, outperformed uh, on ML Perf. Uh, it ran the GPT-3 in under 11 minutes, uh, so that's the latest uh, benchmark that's uh, actually beating other benchmarks in, uh, when run on H100s. We also offer other MLOps tools, so we have Determined AI, and a few other MLOps tools that basically allow you to run your training and inference uh, and actually monitor your training and inference on these on these on a ton of GPUs. So if you have 1,000 GPUs uh, running AI workloads, you can actually monitor what's going on and ensure that your workloads are, are deterministic and producing results that you actually want. So you can then serve your users uh, the, the checkpoint after training your machine learning model. Uh, and then we also offer serverless inference. Uh, this is very useful uh, because we actually optimize for every, every point uh, in our inference stack. Uh, we provide optimized CUDA images uh, with PyTorch um, and all the extra dependencies that PyTorch needs to, to compile flash attention, for example. And we built our internal tool called Tensorizer that actually loads a model in 10 to 15 seconds uh, versus other libraries such as Hugging Face that actually load models in about two to three minutes. Um, so we're actually about uh, eight to 10 X faster in terms of model loading itself uh, compared to other providers. Um, and that's how we optimize for container spin up and model load times uh, to be able to help end users uh, have the best user experience when they're being served large language model workloads. What are the key advantages of this? Uh, since we're deploying on Kubernetes uh, and we handle failovers, uh, we guarantee a 99.99% uptime. Uh, and we scale rapidly with Kubernetes. Uh, so we're able to scale up to thousands of pods uh, at any instant uh, on our on-demand cluster. Uh, you don't get access to this on a public cloud where you have to actually request for an increase in quota. Um, optimize cost management because you're only paying per minute. You're not paying for idle compute. You're never paying for extra servers because you think you need to keep those servers just to handle additional traffic. Uh, you're paying by the minute, and as, as soon as you get more traffic, you just scale to be able to handle that traffic. Uh, we optimize our network to ensure that we have low latency responses, and we can go up to 12 gigabytes per second uh, on some instances for data transfer. Um, and precision scaling allows for you to actually adjust your workload on the right SKU, so you're actually paying only for what you need in terms of resources and in terms of the amount of traffic you have to serve. Um, so here are some, some uh, metrics on, on our benchmarks uh, against generalized clouds, uh, against the public cloud. Uh, we see about uh, three to five orders of magnitude faster container spin-ups, uh, mostly due to the removal of the hypervisor layer, where we're running everything on bare metal, uh, not allowing for a, a spin-up of a virtual machine and then a spin-up of a pod on top of a virtual machine. Uh, we have fast average transfer speeds, uh, so we have we could go up to 12 gigabytes per second uh, on some instances. Uh, so this really helps with egress and ingress uh, and data transfer. Uh, and overall, when we want to spin up containers and load the model, uh, we see about eight to 10 orders of magnitude faster performance for inference compared to the public cloud. Um, and so the numbers here uh, basically indicate that. So we see about 30 to 45 seconds to spin up a container. Uh, this includes image caching. So we cache basing using nodes that are local to each other. So we're actually pulling images faster uh, than from a registry such as Docker Hub. Um, and we, we see that the difference between uh, doing this, optimizing for container spin up versus generalized cloud is about three to five X faster. Um, so it takes about 30 to 45 seconds to spin up a container versus about 120 to 150 seconds to spin it up on a public cloud. Uh, our transfer speeds are about 10x faster. Um, then this is on our object storage. We built our own object storage, um, which basically allows for accelerated reads uh, and writes. Um, and we've seen about 700 megabytes per second on object storage uh, versus generalized cloud is about 72 megabytes. Uh, this can actually go up to four to five gigabytes per second. Uh, and actually go up to wire speed uh, of the network on some instances. Um, and overall, when it all comes together now, uh, we see that the, av the public cloud, to spin up a machine learning container, uh, takes about three to five minutes, uh, versus it takes about 30 to 45 seconds on our, uh, on our cloud. Um, so you can see the time difference, right? Three to five minutes to serve a chat app uh, where users are waiting to get responses uh, will really cause a bad user experience. And if clients are waiting for responses, uh, especially other businesses, to do, to do business critical logic, 
uh, they're, they're going to have a tough time dealing with uh, the latencies. Um, and so this, why we're specialist cloud is because we focus on certain use cases such as ML, AI, and VFX rendering and try to be the best at it. And so we optimize every layer of the stack uh, and, and all the tooling to allow for us to be the best. Um, we uh, did a case study with Tartil AI. Uh, they migrated onto CoreWeave uh, from a public cloud and they saw a 56% reduction in cost uh, by migrating um, and a 22% improvement in latency and they serve about 1,600 requests per minute right now. Um, so they, they do speech text and translate the Quran uh, for their users, and they have about 5 million active users, um, and they're currently running on our cloud, uh, seeing uh, a large difference versus the public cloud. Thank you all for listening. Uh, just to conclude, uh, we are serverless plus bare metal, which offers the fastest and most flexible infrastructure. We offer a multiple GPU SKUs to right size your workload and the best performance adjusted cost in the industry to be able to deploy large scale machine learning workloads uh, and satisfy your customers. Thank you.